1202, um, I'd like to call to order uh, the June 27th um, gathering for the Community Campus Committee. Um, is it okay if we start out with introductions, maybe? Yeah, it's I think. It's been such a hiatus, and there's been a lot of new faces. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Um, I, can, I guess I'll start with myself. My name is Justin Bowig. I'm one of the mayor appointees. I've been on this commission since its inception with a couple hiatuses due to COVID in between. Um, why don't we maybe go around the room here and then we'll um, go to the people on the, on the call. Makes sense. I'm Abby Atun. I'm the director of planning and community development for the city of Middleton. Um, and I'm the organizing staff working with the community campus committee. And so for committee members, um, as well as residents in attendance, if you have any questions throughout the course of this project, um, I would be your point person. I don't have all the answers, but I can at least um, know the staff members who can help track them down. So for any questions throughout the course, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. All right, so should we just do committee members? Or yeah, I think that would be, I think that okay. would be helpful just so everybody's- right. I'm Kevin Spittler, I'm a new appointee um, and uh, first time here, so. I'm Erica Pollock. I'm coming from Parks and Rec Commission. I'm um, yeah, first time on this committee. And I have two kids, five and six year olds, so I do a lot of activities. I'm here. Ken, do you want to go next? Yeah, Ken Market. I'm with the Commission on Aging. So, yes. new appointment. Um, and then let's go to the just so we can kind of get keep track of who is a voting member of the commission, why don't we go to Aaron and then Jean? And also, um, Jean, and I don't know if you know, but in order to be counted for quorum purposes, you need to have your camera and video on. All right, Aaron, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, sorry. A cleaning day in the house today, so I had the mute on. Um, Aaron Summers, I'm the plan commission designee for this committee, taking over for um, Gretchen, Gretchen, who was previously serving. Um, also have a couple kiddos, um, so a lot of these issues are very important to me. Three, five, eight, and ten currently. Nice to meet everyone. And Jean. Hi, I'm Jean Phillips. I'm a new appointee and um, join you as a member of the library board of trustees. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to committee and commission members who just introduced themselves, we have three additional members, Jan Martin, who is a citizen uh, represented, uh, appointed by the mayor, Kate Miller, who is the Middleton Chamber of Commerce director, and Katie Nelson, who is the older person representing District 3 in the city. So we have a nine member voting committee. Um, should we also let the staff members who are here introduce them? Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. Jocelyn, do you want to start? Sure. Um, Jocelyn Sansing, the your public library director. Um, I'm looking forward to getting this project uh, restarted and getting to know you. I'm Brian Gatto, the city administrator. Tammy Derrickson, the Senior Center Director. Bill Burns, Assistant Administrator and Finance Director. Kylie Scherer, the Parks and Rec Director. Did I get all of the committee members and all of the staff members? Okay, I think we're good on introductions. All right, uh, next order of business is approval of minutes from the last meeting, September 13th. 2022. Um, I don't know if there's enough people that were actually at. And, and actually, um, the city has a relatively new process where if there are no um, modifications to the minutes, the person who is chairing the meeting can declare them accepted. So okay. if you just want to ask if anybody has any changes to the minutes. <laughs> There are there any changes to the minutes that anybody needs to talk about? Right. Um, let's approve the minutes from September 13th, 2022 meeting. 
Uh, next item on the agenda is the annual election of the chair. Um, I believe, correct me if this is wrong, this is open to any of the voting members. That is correct, yes. Um, previously, our chair was Kathy Olson, who was an elect elected um, city council member for District 1. Kathy is no longer on the city council and is no longer part of the committee. So um, this would be open to any um, anyone who is interested to throw their name in for chairing the, the committee. So going with that same theme, Katie's not on, correct? Who's the new older person? Katie... Uh, Nelson, Nelson is on, but she's not here today. Not here today. Yes. So yeah, always, you can always feel free to to elect someone who's not here if that if that's where you <laughs> want to go. <laughs> so open it up to the rest of the committee members on the phone and hear. If... And, and Justin is our longest serving member, I think, at this point, and is our vice chair currently. I nominate Justin. I'll second. <laughs> accept? Uh, yes, I accept. Cool. All right. Um, do you want to take a vote on that? Sure. Uh, all the in favor, raise your hand or say yay. Yay. Aye. Hi. All right, first motion passes. Um, the second agenda item is an annual action of the vice chair. Any nominations? Anybody? No. Okay. So I would recommend maybe since we have one mayoral appoint, appointee, either designating the um, current other person or the plan commission member um, to have a little bit of not duplicity, but having people from different backgrounds and how they're associated with the city on this. So that would be my thoughts on this, but... Um, okay. Yeah, this is Aaron. I'm okay with that. If I'll take the vice chair nomination. Yeah, I'll nominate Aaron then. Oh, second. Okay, second. <laughs> All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Now we're on to review of the expanded scope of work for the community campus plan. Um, Abby, would you be able to give us a Introduction. Yes, and I'm going to just switch computers here. I'm going to stop share on that one and see if I can share from this screen. <clears throat> All right. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of things since this is relatively um, a new group of committee members kind of getting back together and picking up where a previous where a project kind of previously left off. Um, if throughout the course of your serving on this committee, um, if you have any questions about volunteering on a city committee, open meetings law, Robert's rules of order, um, anything along those lines. We do have a city volunteer handbook that is available and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have um, throughout the course of serving. I already previously mentioned that I'll be your point of contact for any questions that you have. Um, I might not be the person that can answer them, but I can track down the answers and kind of serve as the um, liaison between committee members and residents um, and other city staff members. Um, for these committee meetings, our plan currently is that we would meet on the fourth Thursday of each month from noon to one, and we'll try to keep the hybrid option available for um, committee members who are working at their full-time job during the day and need to zoom into the meeting. Um, 
we are going to try to keep the meetings to one hour. And today, um, a couple of us actually have another meeting in this room at 2 p.m. So we're going to be pretty strict on the hour today. But if, as we are working on this project, if you find that an hour is really not long enough to do the course of business, you can reach out to me and we can talk about trying to get um, more time on the calendar, 90 minutes or, or whatever it may be. Um, I was just talking to committee member Markhart about um, taking some tours of other facilities. Um, I know that that's something that we had done um, a little bit in the past. And I wanna just mention that we can offer not only um, tours of places that are nearby, like in Dane County, where we could actually hold a committee meeting and go and look at another facility, if that's something that is of interest. Um, but we can also set up a remote option because I know that there, I've already gotten some ideas for, for places that are a little bit outside the driving um, area where I think we'd want to move a committee. Um, so if, if there's any kind of facility um, that you think would be a good um, one to take a look at, we would be happy to set that up either in person or virtually. And you can just send me your thoughts about that and, and kind of we can figure out when it makes sense for the committee to go and look at some other facilities. Um, so I think that, that that was all that I had for the groundwork here. And I just kind of want to quickly go over some slides about the work that we had done previously and what um, we're looking at doing with this expanded scope of work that our city council um, recently approved. And we have recently entered into a new contract with the consultants who are working on this project. So we'll just go over these slides here. So that. All right. So um, the city has set up um, six primary goals for this project. And on the slide, you can see that they're redlined. That is because the goals were amended already through the course of this project, which now um, goes, we, we started on this project back in 2019. And then due to the pandemic and other factors, we've had some delays, but we would really like to get this project back on track and hopefully finish our plan um, by the middle of next year. Um, so we can talk about the timeline a little bit more here after we go through these slides. So the goals for the project are um, to modernize and or replace the city's current public facilities where needed and appropriate. We want to identify opportunities for more efficient utilization of land through combined facilities, um, flexible spaces that can serve more than one purpose, and looking at underground and or shared parking opportunities. So I think um, the city has a lot of goals within our comprehensive plan around um, how we want to encourage infill and redevelopment and reinvestment in downtown Middleton. Um, we had a major project with the Middleton Center three phase project uh, redevelopment project that, you know, kind of looked at taking some buildings that were um, maybe no longer highly functional and redeveloping them into something that can really create a much more vibrant um, place. And so um, that's Though that's along the same lines of what we want to see through um, this, this municipal project as well. And then we want to ensure that municipal facility space needs are met and can accommodate future growth of the city. We would like to identify opportunities for private development and or public private partnerships and mixed use development. Um, we want to enhance downtown Middleton by creating concepts for city buildings that will be visually appealing, inviting, customer friendly and functional. And then the sixth goal is that we want to align with the city's approved sustainability goals for the civic campus. All of these documents are available on the city website at cityofmiddleton.us backslash CCC. So three letter C's. Um, and you can look at the goals in more detail there. That is one, one part of the project that is completed is um, the, the sustainability goals that we have. So um, we want, you can take a look at here at the map and see that the, the blue outline are the properties that are owned by the city in downtown. And you can see that a little over half of that is um, surface parking currently. Um, 
And the depot, the historic train depot is included here as a city owned property, but we do not anticipate any changes to that. That's a nationally designated um, historic landmark. So, and that, that's being used by the tourism department currently. So really the primary focus of this plan is the senior center, the parking lot, the green space next to city hall where Middleton Outreach Ministry used to have their building, city hall, the public library, the library's parking lot, and the parking lot that is across the railroad tracks on Terrace Avenue that is used by the public and by the city. Um, so the, that's the primary focus of the plan, but we want the plan to consider the downtown context as a whole, um, as well as the entire city. So we have hired SEH um, in association with Epstein, Ewan, and Fendorf. Those are our selected consultants for the project. We've been working with them since 2019, and that was done through a competitive process selected by this committee. Um, we recently reconfigured the community campus committee. The major change we made is that we had city staff members as voting members. And through the course of the project, we realized that it doesn't really make sense to have city staff as voting members. That's very uncommon in our governmental structure. And so instead, um, we have had new appointments to the committee um, to make sure that all this, the stakeholders are still rec represented but it's through an appointed member rather than a city staff member. So we have a nine member uh, committee and we just went through the introductions, but this slide will show you who is representing um, different stakeholder groups. <clears throat> so um, the original contract for this project had two phases. And the first one was looking at identifying space needs and um, that included several different steps. We did a survey that was called All Our Ideas, and that's where we had a website and people could um, input different things that they wanted to see happen in downtown Middleton. And then through a ranking process, they could vote things up or vote things down. And so that kind of gave us an idea of what, what the um, key goals were for the community members uh, for this project. And then we did some data gathering and analyzing. We had some Sunday strolls where we walked around um, downtown in Lakeview Park with a wagon and a notepad. And we let people provide input about what they wanted to see on this project on the notepad. Um, we held some stakeholder meetings and then our consultants presented their estimate for what the space needs were for our facilities. And at that time it was 154,000 to 180,000 square feet of space. Um, the space needs was never approved by the city. Um, that kind of came toward the tail end of where we stopped because in March of 2020, when the pandemic hit and our our city staff members were trying to figure out how to work remotely and and, you know, we weren't really holding public meetings at that time. We sort of put the project on hold at that point. Um, so the space needs did not get approved. The second phase of the original contract was additional public input, programming, concept design, and then coming up with cost estimates. Um, our consultants did provide three options, um, which were then revised. And I don't really want to spend a lot of time going over these three options because I expect them to change quite a bit now um, with, with the number of factors that have changed since these were originally developed. But just to give you an idea, um, one, one of the concepts that they had come up with was called the hub, and it was building a new building on the library site and the current library parking lot. Um, so it would be placing all of the municipal functions within um, this, this space here. There was another concept very similar called the helm and it essentially did the same thing except it provided parking at the first level. So instead of uh, exclusively relying on underground parking, it had one level of at grade parking similar to like the target that's in Hilldale, um, not quite the ceiling height that they have there. And then um, there was a third concept called the heart, and that one was looking at putting the municipal functions on the current city hall site and green space, as well as parking lot, and then um, connecting it uh, to a city hall facility, which would be on the site of the senior center building. 
Um, so again, there was three options that we kind of, when we left off, we left off with the hub, the helm, and the heart. Um, but one of the biggest concerns that we had with these is that there was really very little to differentiate them. They were all quite similar in terms of the cost. Um, and you can see like the, this was going back to 2020 estimates in 2025. Um, we expect that these costs at this point would be much higher just because of how dramatically construction costs have increased recently. But you can see that at the numbers that we were looking at that time uh, for 2020 were 51 to 72 million with an estimate for 2025 total cost of 60 to 84 million. And like I said, I, those numbers are outdated at this point. Um, we also uh, looked over some different strategies for funding the community campus plan um, that were put together with our finance director, Bill Burns, um, and these would need to be updated through the course of this project as well. So as a refresher, the tasks that have been completed for this project are we, um, the Common Council recommended that we do an enhanced public engagement strategy and the Common Council approved the sustainability goals. Um, all, of the, all of the steps within this process um, are gonna be advisory coming from this committee and the council as the elected body of the city will, will make all of the, the final decisions. Um, again, I mentioned all of these documents are available on this website and through the course of this project, I'll continue to update that um, so that you can have easy access to all of the materials in one place. The tasks that remain are to complete the public engagement, approve space needs, develop a recommended design, and develop recommended cost estimates. So we have a lot of work to do, no decisions um, in terms of like how we wanna move this project forward have been made yet at this point. And then I already mentioned that um, we have pretty much been on hiatus in 2020, though we did have a little uh, brief period in 2022 where we were trying to get the committee back together and make progress, but um, we really weren't able to keep it going. And so now we're kind of getting it back together and hoping that we can come up with a resolution. Um, and then the expanded scope of work that is included in your packet has been approved by the city council and the revised contract that's in your packet has now been approved by our city attorney and it's been executed. So that, that work is starting back up with the consultants, but we did not invite them to this meeting today because this is just kind of the meeting uh, for the committee members to get to know each other and get, get back on track. But I would expect um, that our consultant team, um, as they make progress and have, you know, documents that they would like to present to the committee and get feedback on, then they would either be attending in person or remote for um, some of our future meetings. So um, again, I mentioned we have an expanded and revised scope of work. Um, there were kind of three key factors, um, aside from just general changes resulting in the pandemic and how the workplace has changed. But one is we really wanted more differentiation of concepts um, so that when we're presenting options to our, our council and to this body, that you have a way to, to kind of evaluate uh, the pros and cons of each and the concepts that we had received previously were very similar. Um, we want an itemized list of um, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing analysis for our current buildings because we would like for um, there to be consideration given to actually rehabbing and reusing some of our existing facilities. Um, and we want to make sure that if we are going with a rehab option that we would still be able to meet the city's approved sustainability goals for the project and that we can meet um, the needs of our IT department because these buildings have been a, a bit of a challenge, especially with the hybrid um, workplace, getting everything ready to go for that. So we have brought our IT director, Drew Montour, into the fold with our staff team to make sure that we're um, keeping him involved and we can make sure that we're meeting those needs. And then um, 
with the community center, the city does not currently have a community center. So we have a senior center and we have a library. So we have something that kind of serves as a baseline for what the needs are in the community. But the, the community center concept for recreational programming has been a little bit more challenging for us to, to determine what the programming needs are. Um, and so we want to make sure that this revised concept would really um, evaluate that and also look at other comparable facilities and other communities so that we can really get a good handle on the needs. Um, we'll also be updating the senior center space needs and the library space needs. Um, the library, just as an example, the library did a space needs study in 20, I think it was 2016, 15. Um, and that was looking at population projections and what the needs in the community were, but the projections that they were working from were the Department of Administration population projections, which generally are uh, very conservative, conservatively low. And they were projecting in, that Middleton would have a population of 23,000 by 2040, and it's 2024 and we're already at 23,000. So this study really needs to be updated. Um, it is no longer relevant. So again, um, the expanded scope to the contract would include um, space needs study and looking at the space needs for each city program, both currently in the near term and in the long term. It would also look at rehabbing existing facilities, and then it would have a more in-depth analysis on the programming needs for a community center and establishing space needs. Um, we would also like the study to look at what is the best location for a community center because I know when we were when we had this project happening previously, um, there were some questions about if we do move forward on building a community center, does it make sense to have it here in the downtown or would it make sense to locate it? at a city park or on another property, um, maybe that has more space that's not as constrained as downtown. Um, and then we wanted more differentiated options and specifically we're asking our consultants to come up with an option that would be fully new construction, similar to the three concepts that they've given us previously. One that would be a hybrid option that would include some new construction, some rehabilitation of existing facilities, and then a third option that would be exclusively looking at just rehab. Um, we want the study to consider the changes um, in the workforce and workplace environment caused by the pandemic. And then most importantly, we want the consultants to help this body as well as the Common Council come up with a prioritization and a preferred option by the end of the study. Um, and then I just wanted to note here on the bottom, and it's something that I wanna make sure that everybody understands because um, this, this is an expensive project, but this project does not include architecture and engineering services. So depending on what is selected by the city, we still will need to hire architects and engineers to design whatever we decide to do. And then of course, to bid the project and to, to do the construction work. This is just helping us come up with like the massing, the overall square footage and where the facility would be located, but it does not include detailed architecture and engineering. So that is all I had on that topic. Um, happy to, open that up to discussion or answer any questions. Katie, I see that you've joined us. Hello. Hi there. I came in at about, I don't know, 10 after or so. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Well, actually, actually, I have a lot, but, uh, but does it enhance public engagement mean a deeper dive or a new approach or what does it mean? It's a great question. Um, so originally we were working with some, um, some employees of the Wisconsin Population Health Institute and we wanted to look at the public engagement through a health and all policies approach which, which would consider 
public health and social equity as a framework for decision making. Um, but that was actually one of the issues that we ran into with the three concepts is that it was really hard to evaluate differences between the three because of how similar they were. I don't think we've fully given up on the idea of using the public health and social equity approach as a framework. Um, but I, I do know that with this expanded scope, um, our consultants are willing to provide the staff with any information that is needed and any recommendations that are needed for doing the public engagement, but it would actually be our team here that would be taking those materials and training and actually going out and doing doing the work um, mm -hmm. with the community. So public engagement takes it it's takes a lot of time. So. Mm -hmm. And can I ask one more? Yes. Well, does the teen center get folded into the, the overall approach too, or is that just a, because the school supports that now, right? The but, youth center, is that what you're yeah, asking center, yeah. about? Um, I don't think that that would be part of this because mm -hmm. I believe that when the high school <clears throat> did, um, when Middleton Cross Plain School District did the high school project, they have found a more permanent space for the youth center. So I don't think, oh. actually Kylie should probably be more likely right. to answer because Kylie's department manages the youth center, but that, that wouldn't be a component of the community center. Do you think? Um, I would, I would think that, um, at some point just to have a discussion about it, but there is a location for the, the youth center right now, mm -hmm. um, currently, um, at, at Cromery middle school. Um, but it is, it is always a challenge, um, to have it spread out at, um, around a school facility and work on um, with all the gym spaces um, with after school programs that they also have going on um, into if we ever wanted to look at expanding um, the amount of youth that were able to participate that's um, it's always limited by space so let's go ahead sorry um does anybody know where the actual center of the city of Middleton is now with all the expansion to the north and west? You mean like the geographical center or the population center? Population and geographical center, yeah. Because if, if you look at Middleton right now in downtown Middleton here, we're kind of on the edge of this because just about four blocks over is the city of Madison. And all the expansion is going to be going probably to the north and the west. And I think part of this review is they need to know where our population center is, because one of the biggest problems we have in Middleton is internal transportation. And you can build these nice facilities, but a lot of people can't get to them because they're too far away. Um, the second thing is on the needs analysis is we really have to look a lot at usage of these buildings, like the city hall is used, but not to the extent that the senior center of the library is being used or maybe the youth center is being used. So I think somewhere the consultant needs to take that into, into consideration is actual usage and not just population increase. We know the population is going to expand, but we don't know whether it's going to be the, the degree of expansion is going to be in, in private homes or apartment buildings. And right now it seems like apartment buildings are taking the lead, but I'm not sure how you know the city center the, the planning commission probably has a better idea, but I, I think some of these need to be kind of refined in which direction we want to go so we get better input to make decisions. Okay. I think we probably could, we don't have it currently, but we could probably find information about the population center and the geographic center you pretty easily using gis yeah. mapping and the data that we have more so which way the expansion of middleton is going to yes occur? the only direction is going to be west northwest and north till we butt against one and key yeah most most of our planned growth area is north of the city and east of the belt line um so and that's that's both through geographic constraints like the lake and current development, but it's also because of intergovernmental agreements that the city has with surrounding jurisdictions. Thank you. Yep. Just to add on to that though, our scope here is really looking at the city owned parcels of what's in downtown. It's not to 
establish where this would best be. That's correct. And I, okay. with the exception maybe of the community center, because that's the one piece that um, the scope of work didn't define, like, mm -hmm. should it definitely be in the downtown or, you know, should it maybe be located elsewhere? But the rest of the facilities, I think we're going into this assuming that the senior center, city hall, the library are staying downtown. And um, just adding on to your comment about the population use of the buildings, like there's a clear distinction of employees, like if they're this building's probably more heavier towards the, the staff, the employees that are actually work there versus the public that yeah, uses sure. the space. And we, we did talk about the interaction between the two and we are joining, you know, into one facility and how, how that interacts. So well and, 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 and the city employees are going to increase the number two as the city gets bigger. So I mean yeah. it's understood, but you know, you have to look at a you know a utilization yeah, yeah. projection. Um, are there any other comments from what Abby has presented thus far or questions? Not. Do you want to go on to the draft time? Sure. Go through that and discuss. Yeah, so this is um, the initial draft timeline that was put together by our consultants. Um, really just trying to get us to uh, mid-2025 completion date. Uh, really, the main things that I would just like to mention here is that we're really trying to prioritize getting um, some of the evaluation of our existing facilities done. That's actually <laughs> something that our consultants have already started work on uh, as soon as possible in order to align with the city's budget. Um, so... We have already done our budget kickoff for the calendar year 2025. And um, we really need to know if we, we have some, we know that we have some needs uh, for mm -hmm. upgrades within our current facilities. And it's kind of that MEP analysis is gonna help us make a determination whether there are some interim investments that we need to be making in our facilities. And so that's why we've tried to include that on the front end. Um, other than that, you can see that we will plan for the community campus committee to meet, be meeting every month. And that is going to be a standing meeting that will be at this time. So the fourth Thursday of each month from noon to one at this point. Um, and then we're going to also be having um, interim meetings with our staff team. Uh, so that's making sure that we are all on the same page with all of the items that are going to be included on the agenda, that we have the information that um, we need to follow up from any committee members' requests from previous meetings. And we'll also um, have some meetings um, which will include uh, other bodies of the city, like the Common Council or possibly the Planning Commission and other committees. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that we should really offer. Did anyone have any questions on the draft timeline that was included in the packet? Can we go back to the task? What's the yeah. units on the on the top block? Is it days, hours, months, or <clears throat> there's no units up there to designate? Oh, is that this area? Is that where you're yeah. I believe that those are hours that the consulting team will be spending. It's kind of important. I mean, it looks like it's kind of short hours here, but it's just a comment. Okay. okay agree with that but this was the proposal that was already approved yes by the common council as far as the total sum that that was approved is derived from these hourly marks right yeah if we were to increase any of these that would affect the budget for sure thank you but at the end of the day we have five things that you outlined Okay, oh, I'll set the end of the day. 
need to be complete. Right. This is their budget that they put together in order to accomplish those. Right. That's correct. So we have so meeting once a month. Sorry, I'm just not talking through this for for this group with an hour of time. I guess I just want to make sure that the consultants are getting all the information that they need in order to complete their work because obviously the time that they're spending on it is committee members. Expected to and having a clear timeline from them when they need the answers by in order to complete their work would be okay. Then on, on our side, having the resources or people to to mention the he would be responsible for, for going out and getting additional input from the community. And that might take a long time. So if we're doing that, we should probably get that started like by next. Could you speak up, please? Oh, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> I'm, I'm an old man. I can't. <laughs> no, my wife's always telling me the same thing. No, I was just mentioning that uh, it sounds like the uh, out, outreach is going to be an important part of this and it might take a long time. So to get that momentum started now, it's going to be probably task one to get the consultants with it, mm -hmm. as well as any projections that they need help from staff members or yeah. liaisons of the different departments. We will get started with them on that right away. anyone on the zoom any committee members that are on the zoom do you have any input on the timeline or any concerns no nope, no concerns here just getting back up to date with where you guys left off same here All right, well, um, feel free to email or call with any um, questions that you have or if there's any additional information that any committee members um, need. And also um, send me any recommendations that you have for any facilities that you think would be um, a good example that might be relevant for our project. And I'd be happy to reach out and see if we, we can schedule time that might need to be out of a normal committee meeting just so we can keep our monthly meetings on track here but i'd be happy to set any tours up we probably would need to notice it as a city meeting and make it open to the public um, so want to allow members of the public to yeah that sounds good um yeah if anybody else sitting around the table if you have any comments that you want to address to that's cool. Hi, my name is Heidi Schalk, and I live at 7409 Ferris Avenue. Um, and I noticed with the three um, proposed um, buildings or campuses that the Hart uh, campus proposal did not include building right up to Terrace Avenue. And I'm wondering what I've heard is that that is being proposed as a, an adjacent apartment building. Um, and so I'm wondering how, as a person with property just across the street, I can be involved actively in trying in real time to um, 
spread the information about what's happening and what the choices are um, so that we can, as a community um, who will be highly impacted, especially if the proposal involves building right up to Terrace Avenue, um, I just would like to know how we can be more engaged in the planning. Well, all, all of the meetings are public. We distribute the agendas and minutes through the city's free listserv, which is notify me. And then uh, of course too, we're gonna be doing public involvement. So you can come to any meetings, all of the city meetings are public um, and attend and listen. Um, you can remote in and you can stay engaged through tracking those agendas and minutes. And then once we actually have the, the concept that you referenced is a, a bit outdated now, but once we have the new concepts, you can of course provide input to um, the committee and your elected officials about your thoughts on those. And those will be available on the city website? Yes, yep, at cityofmiddleton.us slash CCC. I have a question. Are the architects going to come up with fresh new designs for these buildings, or are they going to photocopy what's already been put up and then just put it on up down here? They would be new designs, but that's not part of this scope of work. We would have to, this is just showing like approximate space. <laughs> it's not actually a designed building. So that would be the next step is we would hire architects to come up with their own fresh designs. As you mentioned, it wouldn't be something that would just be photocopied. Have you just put in my question? So when we get to that point where we've got a location or a, an option that the community and the council have picked, we would do uh, what's called a request for proposal or request for qualifications to select probably a national search of architecture firms that would then you know, some firm would get hired and then design a building or buildings based upon what decisions we make on location. So we could get a new design based upon where, you know, how, however we solve these questions that we've been talking about today, probably two years down the road. Yes, can you please? Have a quick question. Just to follow up with Heidi, um, I'm Pat Levy and I'm on Middleton Street. And so the next phase is you say to get feedback from city uh, residents, right? Task mm -hmm. force that's gonna get that feedback. So that's when we can provide our input as to what we would like to see. So we could attend the meetings, put feedback in. You wouldn't have to wait until your group designs and then you present it to the public. We would be yeah. part of that input to the consultants. I think so, yeah. Yeah, depending on what the, the outreach is. So last time, like Abby mentioned, we did these. Um, and I believe all these were posted pre-time. I mean, they, sh they should have been. Like, yeah, they, they were set up different stations to, to talk about and go through likes, dislikes, what makes sense, what doesn't. At that time, I don't, that was before we even had the massing or the buildings. Yeah. So I would assume it would be something similar to that, but. Um, because you said that would be a big thing that we would want to get started on right away. So I think that's where we want to get, you know, more people involved too. Mm -hmm. yep. Great. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sir. Alan Stieberg, I live in Hubbard Avenue. And this may be outside the scope at this moment, but I am concerned about traffic patterns on Elmwood and Hubbard and how that's dealt with and who makes the decisions if they're going to make one ways or anything like that. Because that's been tossed around in the past. Okay. And I also have a concern about the parking issues. Um, I don't know how many parking spaces they're going to recapture from what they lose, but I see parking as a real issue as we go down the road. Thank you. Anyone else in the room that wishes to speak? Um, anyone joining online that wants to make any comments? Jerry Ann Holtzman. 
Hi Go there. Um, Jerry Ann Holzman live on Terrace Avenue right across from the current parking lot. Um, to uh, complement what the gentleman from Hubbard said, we'd be very concerned, of course, on Terrace if there's apartment building across from us with the increased traffic that we would have on our street. Um, so we do appreciate all all of the opportunities that it sounds like we'll have to provide some input into the future. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments, or concerns? All right. With that, I'd like to um, ask if any of the members want to um, put forth a motion to end the meeting. Uh, this oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Katie. Um, I think point of information, I don't think you have to take a vote on that. If the agenda is up, you can just adjourn it. Okay. This is an, also a new thing since we last met is the committees typically now just declared the chair declares the meeting adjourned. All right, fair enough. <laughs> that being said, meeting adjourned. Thanks all and have a great rest of the day. Yes, thank you. We changed thank a you. lot since we met last Yeah. <laughs> Like they, they, they may not have changed it. Not all the committees have done that yet, but yeah, we're kind of interested in it actually gives Hey, thanks. I'm I'm just we need some issues. The biggest one is the biggest one. Apologies, I'm always going to be a few minutes. No problem. Sure. 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 Sure.